The 6.5 is on the road at the Lattice Developer Conference here in San Jose, California. Dan, we have been chronicling FPGAs for a while. And I have to admit that Lattice has brought the sexy into FPGAs. And whether you know it's versus ASICs, versus controllers, and even, even competitive, they've, they've absolutely amped up this market. It's pretty exciting to watch. Yeah, it's been a really great run for Lattice Semiconductor. The company has been really firing on all cylinders, uh, you know, di diversifying the business in really meaningful ways and competing. And as we know, you know, there's a pretty large spectrum of FPGAs and the company has really found a way to differentiate itself at the low end and has been working its way up the stack. And part of that process of working you know, your way up the stack requires a bigger ecosystem, more developers, more growth, and this is exactly what the leadership team is doing, and so glad to be here in San Jose uh, for, their, for their first developer first conference. First developer conference, which as I'll reinforce many times, I think is a big milestone Huge. Uh, for the company. So, Without further ado, let's welcome back Jim, Steve, and Assam. Great to see you guys. Good, Good to see, see you, too. See you too. Thanks for spending yeah. time with us. It, Appreciate it. it. It's exciting stuff. And again, uh, I've seen the demos, seen the announcements, uh, but let's absolutely dive right in here. Okay. Yeah, it's been it's been a lot of fun to follow, and I'm sure you're sitting over there like, what are they going to say? How are they chronicling us? You know, it's fun to be the analyst because companies are always kind of wondering, like, what's the outside view look like? Well. The outside view has been very positive and it's been great and everybody that's out there, you know, spent a little time with us, has seen we've spent some good time with you guys and uh, you've earned our attention and we've appreciated having the chance to watch your growth, not just in revenue, but in products and customers and partners. And my feeling is we're going to see a lot of that this week. So let's start with kind of that, Jim, overall, like the decision to go down this path. You know, anytime you, you open the door, you kind of open up, say, well, will, will the partner show up? Are we going to get the names that people want to see? Uh, are there going to be enough people on the stream watching it? So like, kind of what was the- <laughs> Now you got me worried. No! <laughs> Come on. You aren't worried, <laughs> or maybe you are, I don't know. It's okay, it's okay, you look yeah. okay though. Um, tell us a little bit about kind of the genesis behind doing a developer conference. Kind of, why, kind, of, why, kind of why we decided yeah. to- Why'd you go this route? Yeah, we thought, look, we, we just thought it was a great time to do a developers conference. Uh, and I guess it's a number of different reasons, right? First of all, when you just, you look at the number of FPGAs that are getting used across the industry, it just keeps growing and so many different applications, right? Um, actually, when I spend time with our customers, Lattice has over 10,000 customers. When I talk to our customers, I'm always amazed by the new applications and usage yes. models they find for FPGAs. And then look, uh, if you look over the last, let's say, 10 years, uh, there's been about 5 billion FPGAs deployed by the right. industry over the last 10 years, actually almost half of those were Lattice FPGAs. So Lattice actually has, we believe, the largest installed base of FPGAs out there. And then when we look forward to the next you know, 10 years, we think that number of FPGAs is actually gonna more than double over the next 10 years to actually be over 10 billion. Uh, so just a lot of FPGAs used across a lot of applications. But the other reason is, look, we have a really, really vibrant uh, com developers community. Right. If you look worldwide, we estimate that there's about 50,000 active FPGA developers worldwide and that they generate or start new FPGA designs of about 100, actually over 100,000 per year new design kickoffs each year. So, I mean, that's a really vibrant community. So perfect time, we thought, to do an FPGA conference, especially when you take into account, look, Lattice, today we have the biggest product portfolio right. we've ever had in our company's 40 year history. Yeah, it's, it, you know, part of that chronicling was watching your focus. Yeah. And then you started adding and layering on, again, I, I call it bag of, bag of parts. I used to be a bag of parts, you know, I work for bag of parts company. We like, we, 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 you know? like to use a little bit better terminology <laughs> yes, than that, Pat. But, but as yeah. compared to your solution stacks, and, and that has been a big part of it, because historically, you know, even, you know, when I was either doing systems or semiconductors, FPGAs were very complex and very useful. And by adding these solution stacks, the applicability in the market, uh, the market segmentation and the ability for you to, to, to address those markets, really has gone gone up a, a exponentially. So that's one of the things that I've noted. And and the other part again was adding and layering on new products. So Steve, like here we are at a developer conference. Uh, you have some big news coming out here. What are some of the highlights uh, of that? 
I think uh, probably the biggest highlight is we're significantly expanding our mid-range FPGA offering. As you said, we're moving up the stack. There hasn't been a lot of great innovation in the mid-range for a while. and uh, We have seen some 10-year-old <laughs> designs that are still being newly integrated. It's one thing to have an installed base, right? It's like, hey, I might not open this up, but yeah, yeah things that are 10 years old being put in new designs. Yeah. And, and we built a brand new architecture with Avant from the ground up, specifically optimized for those mid-range design requirements. Right. And, um, and when we launched Avant uh, last uh, December, we did our first family, kind of optimized for edge processing, but we have two more new families that we're introducing today. We have a general purpose family that has a lot of great features and performance. It covers a whole range of different applications. And I guess the one that really gets me excited is Avant X. <laughs> That's the one oh, so where we you do like some of your children better. Okay, uh, well, just so we get that out there. We All like right. them in different ways. <laughs> but upon X, it's it's really been we really jacked up the bandwidth on that device, and we have a terabit per second of total system bandwidth. That really opens a lot of doors, and now we can really be uh, our FPGAs can be used in uh, data path applications, not just system control. And so uh, it really is going to open a whole new set of applications that uh, that we can go after with our FPGAs. And uh, and of course, our general purpose FPGAs are great uh, for doing a lot of applications like connectivity to the cloud and integration of all disparate types of sensors that, uh, that need to be aggregated and fused together and, and processed on the edge. And so uh, this, uh, these two families are going to really uh, expand the applications we can serve. But it's not just about the silicon, it's about the software too, right? And we have brand new releases of our development tools for FPGAs, our embedded uh, design environment, as well as several of our application targeted solution stacks. And, uh, and we've got a lot of things in there that will help customers develop mid-range FPGAs. Things like block-based design, incremental compile, you know, automated scripting, types of things that really help customers get their designs more quick, done more quickly and get to market sooner. I love it. Yeah, it's really a powerful combination, and whether it's FPGAs for you know secure boot operations or in layering on AI capabilities, which of course has been the theme of the year. Pat, we've actually made it like five minutes into a conversation. Well, I don't think we AI. actually said AI. No, I know. But but you have some really meaningful. I remember last year at, at one of your conferences, you know, seeing the demonstrations of some of the ways that you are supporting AI applications at the edge. We know. Uh, you know, autonomous vehicles and the complexity of sensors and cameras creates a lot of opportunity for FPGAs. And you know, as, a, as an analyst that you know, kind of, you know, toes the line between the markets and, of course, the technology. I've also watched you double plus your SAM, which mm -hmm. is something that is really important. And as you double your SAM, that means you need to double the ecosystem, the partners. You need to expand to to get new reach and drive new opportunities. Now, this event, it looks like uh, Isam, you have some tremendous guests that are going to come on stage from companies that have really, speaking of AI, taken the world by storm, but also companies that are the bedrocks of their industries, that are partnering with, with Lattice, uh, that are growing their utilization of F FPGAs. Talk a little bit about the ecosystems and the partners and those that are going to be showing up here at the developer conference. And, and, and also, how did you attract these kinds of companies uh, to, to show up and really give their, their vote of confidence to what you're doing here? Yeah, so um, good question. So the ecosystem itself is really important for, for any type of new products that we're introducing, especially FPGAs. If I go back to when we started this journey back in 2018, I think all of us were, were here at that time, the ecosystem was very modest and now it's grown by more than 5X. So what does that mean? That means if you go out there today and you look at the ecosystem around FPGAs, there are more companies there today that are actually building IPs that can be put into Lattice FPGAs. If you go and look at the reference platforms that are being launched, and these are reference platforms by companies and by other semiconductor companies, there are more and more now leveraging Lattice hardware and software in those reference platforms. And if you look at just the number of developers and companies that are trained on Lattice hardware and software solutions, that's just increased tremendously as well. So the ecosystem has grown significantly. Now, um, your question was about how did we uh, attract these people and who's at this developers conference. I want to remind you that when we set out to do the uh, Avant platform, you know, those, we had 100 plus customers that told us, here's what we want in a mid-range, here's what we need. And we said, look, we're going to go and 
develop this mid-range platform for you, but we want you to be part of this journey. That includes a lot of customers and some ecosystem partners as well. So here we are today, Lattice's Developers Conference. This is an FPGA conference. And what, what we're really pleased about is that in this conference, there's more than 35 plus sessions around FPGAs and how to get the best out of FPGAs. Not just around artificial intelligence, sensor to cloud, security, but a variety of topics. And these sessions and panels that, are, that we're going to have as well aren't just driven by Lattice, they're driven by the ecosystem and our customers. Uh, in the demo showroom, which uh, you guys uh, have seen, uh, the demo showroom has more than 40 plus technology demos. And that's really impressive, you know, you, you know, our customers and partners are in that demo showroom, more than half of them are showcasing uh, these demos on how they're leveraging technology and the innovation that they're bringing into the market around different areas, around AI again, connectivity, security. So that was really exciting to see the, the amount of people that are willing to come in and participate in, in this developers conference. And then uh, you kind of alluded to it, we had also three uh, keynote speakers that we're really excited about. Uh, one was from NVIDIA, and here's our AI topic again, and this is around AI at the edge, and they talked about the challenge and the partnership we've had with NVIDIA in solving something really critical in the industry, which is how do you get sensors that were never designed to communicate with compute to get them to communicate with compute so you can do AI type of, edge AI types of applications. So the partnership was announced, and we've got boards, and we've got demos of this that are available for our customers, and we're really excited about that. We also had um, one of our um, partners, uh, which is Meta, uh, come and we had their head of security, Indy, come in and talk about uh, security challenges in a data center today. You know, regulations are increasing, the ecosystems around data centers are getting larger, so how do you get security? How do you maintain security and have it adaptable over time? And so, Indy shared some of the challenges and how that's being addressed, and we've had a, a partnership with Meta on that. And then we had we, what we thought would be a really good proof point around factory automation. And so we had BMW. You know, if you haven't been to that factory, I know Jim and I have been yeah, there. Yeah, we've been to that factory. Really nice it's factory amazing. and it's amazing what they do there. We had the head of IT, Fred, come in and uh, sh share with everybody Industrial 4.0, what's happening and how to leverage programmability and the partnership we have uh, developed Were you in with South Carolina, or which one did you go to? Oh, we went to Munich. <gasps> Munich, oh, you the, went to the, the large one. The the yeah. 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 It's an amazing they, factory. Yeah, they have the innovative hub there that uh, we're, we're helping out in, and it's just, it was, it's impressive uh, what they do in that factory. So we had a, a lot of really good partners and customers that really traveled from around the world, from Europe and APAC and across the U.S. to participate in this conference. So really excited about it. And again, this is an FPGA conference on how we share best practices and how we innovate more together. Yeah, part of the benefit, and sometimes it's hard uh, to measure of a developer conference, is the shared experiences that the partners have, yeah. right? It's one thing where you, know, you can post examples of it online and they can go read it, but now you have people eating meals together, having drinks together, saying, hey, what did you do? How did you do that? Right, and and that's something that's it's very hard to measure, but I, I really think it's the some of the biggest value of developer uh, conferences. Um, the networking is important. Exactly, yeah. and, and when it comes to you know BMW, uh, Meta, uh, and Nvidia, those aren't exactly small names. Those are those are huge names uh, out there that in each of their areas are cutting edge uh, for for things that they're doing. I have to ask you about NVIDIA though, maybe a little bit of a double click. So NVIDIA does their own AI processing. I need to explain a little bit, but let's do the double click on that. Um, is it pre-processing? Is it feeding signals? What are, you, what are you doing and then what are they doing in a, in a system? Yeah, so when you think about AI on the edge, um, you can probably put it into two simple categories. There's stuff that we do very well and we've demonstrated at inferencing on the edge, low power with an FPGA. At, at like very small wattage, like yeah. how many watts? Milliwatts. Like just milliwatts. milliwatts of power. Okay. Yeah. Just want to get that out there. Milliwatts folks, of so. power. <laughs> but there are also applications on the edge that require, you know, you need the super compute power of a data center. And, but you can't afford that latency. So what you want to do is you want to bring that supercomputer closer and closer to the edge. And NVIDIA, you know, they're leaders. They've got the Orin uh, project and processors that uh, are like supercomputers that you can put closer to the edge. 
But like we said earlier, sensors were never made to communicate with that directly. So our partnership was how do we take sensor data, and there's so many varieties of sensors out there. I mean, we estimated more than 10, tens of billions of sensors out there. Think of all the different data streams, interface standards, formats of data. How do we bring that in, leverage our low power technology to bring it in, aggregate it, compute, add some compute to it, and then translate that into a language that the Orin project can then consume, and then you can apply a lot of the NVIDIA know-how and software tools to be able to get your AI at the edge. And so this is something that's been a challenge for the industry, and we've been working on it with uh, NVIDIA for a while, and we've got uh, boards now available for our customers, and a lot of this will be open sourced on GitHub as well, so that Ooh. others can take it and actually add to it as well as part of the ecosystem. As you go generation to generation, as you announce new parts, of course what you're doing, you know, I talked about the SAM expansion, which is great, but you're also generally drumming up some new applications that creates that, uh, that, that additional SAM. You're saying, hey, we could do this before, but now because we've announced Avant Plus, we can do Y. And why there's all this demand for it. And so, like, Pat and I always say, you know, the ground truth, besides earnings, Jim, for any company, <laughs> is always the combination of the customers and the use cases. Yeah. So, you know, what are the use cases with these new offerings and with this expanded ecosystem and these improved software offerings that you're seeing that you think are really going to be the driver of success and what are you really hoping to land here at, mm -hmm. the, at the developer conference? Yeah. I think there's a, a very broad range of applications that we've opened up uh, with Avant. There's, there's a lot of great uh, capabilities that we have in our Nexus family, and it scales and meets the needs of those small FPGA applications, but um, when we built Avant, we really wanted to scale up those capabilities. So we're building FPGAs that are five times bigger, they got 10 times the, the serial bandwidth and system bandwidth, and up to 30 times the compute capability as well. So with all this extra horsepower, what we're seeing is customers are significantly upgrading their systems, but since we're so power efficient, they can do it within the same power and thermal envelope that they had before. So, um, you know, a lot of uh, systems on the edge are integrating a lot more AI capability. And we've actually optimized the FPGA fabric for doing hardware acceleration of those AI algorithms, right? And um, like I said, we also have, uh, and uh, we have a lot of flexibility in the I.O. that allow us to do uh, these, you know, sensor aggregation like we're doing with NVIDIA and the ability to, you know, process and fuse data streams from many different sensors, smoothly integrate that and send that off to the cloud with high bandwidth. We also have a lot more system bandwidth that allows us to be in the data path of many applications like networking. Uh, we can take in a whole bunch of streams coming in at 25 gigabit per second. We can uh, format that, process it, retransmit it out in a different standard, all at the line rate of the system. That's a type of application uh, that uh, uh, is going to be new for us at Lattice, and I think that's really going to expand our footprint in several of the markets such as uh, comms and compute. And so um, a lot of great new capability for scaling traditional applications yeah. in industrial, but also opening up new applications as well uh, in the areas uh, you know, across the markets of uh, comms, compute, and even industrial and automotive. Yeah, I'm super excited just to get the details on how your customers are using Avant, how they plan on to use it, the benefits they're, they're getting from it. So um, we talked a little bit about the past uh, in the run-up here of Lattice. Uh, we talked about what y'all are doing today and a little bit about what you're doing at your developer conference, but you've all been at the company for five years. I mean, it's hard to believe this, <laughs> right? That it's been this long. It's like, you know, it, it's, it's been fast. It, it, it's been a lot of hard work um, and y'all have changed the company. Uh, completely, but so I have to ask, looking forward, and Jim, I'm going to start with you, but if y'all want to add something in there, what are you most excited about, uh, about the future yeah. of, of, of where you're headed? Yeah, definitely. And maybe I'll start with, a, I, I can't believe it's been five years, <laughs> right? I mean, God, that went by so fast. <laughs> um, and just to, before I talk about the future, just to give a little bit of credit to the team is, you know, the company, like you said, it's changed a lot so over the last much. five years. I mean, just one example with Steve and the engineering team, uh, they tripled the output rate of new products, right? Over the last few years, our just rate and pace of new product introductions was 
three times what it was prior, right? Yes. I mean, so that's basically tripling the rate of innovation that we're bringing to our customers. You made that commitment at your first yeah, analyst day. Yeah, we talked about yes, that. Yeah, good memory yes. at our first analyst day. And, <laughs> and we I said, and, okay, and game the team, on, yeah, let's do it. And the team made that happen, and so, you know, as we're here today, uh, the company has the strongest and broadest product portfolio it's ever had in its 40, 40 year history, right? And so I think I'm you know, certainly really proud of what the team has uh, done to date. But uh, I would say, and I, and I think I speak on behalf of all three of us, when we look forward over the next five, 10 plus years, we're much more excited about where we're headed yeah. moving forward. In fact, we still feel like we're kind of scratching the surface <laughs> of what the company can really do. And so, you know, definitely you can count on us to continue to rapidly expand out the product portfolio. Um, you know, today, as part of the developers conference, we're announcing a bunch of new silicon, a bunch of new software, et cetera. But you can expect that beat rate of steady innovation to continue and for that product portfolio to continue to expand. And that's probably, at least for me, um, because I'm, I'm a product guy at the yep. end of the day. I love, um, I, I think for me that's the most exciting thing is the the path that we're on to continue to rapidly expand the product portfolio. But that for me that's exciting and I think our customers are excited about that too. Well I, I mean the results seem to speak for it and uh, you know as, as I, you may be a little editorial here, it's you know, okay, uh, we're analysts, we're allowed to uh, do that, I think. As we, <laughs> as we end this thing, though, is that the results have largely spoken for themselves. I mean, look, you know, we're, we're coming out of a multi-year, you know, in many ways, technology recession. And of course, I am one of the people that's always like, well, tech is deflationary. And in many ways, we've seen that with like, say, the AI boom. But for many traditional parts of the technology stack, it has been a very difficult couple of years. And as a uh, publicly traded company, you guys face every quarter um, being assessed and scrutinized for your performance. And you've had a Im remarkably strong run. You've diversified your portfolio. You've gone from you know the, the, the low end small FPGAs to the mid, and you've done this very successfully. You've expanded your SAM. Uh, you've, you know, you've recruited a very strong ecosystem and you've grown um, the talent base, which of course is going to be really important to the, to the long-term scale of the company. So, you know, my assessment is, you know, you have a lot to be proud of. Of course, we're going to continue to challenge you to do more, that's our job. But, uh, you know, I'm very excited to see how the developer conference uh, goes, um, you know, and to see the reaction and to continue to monitor and track your progress. And just want to say thank you so much for joining us here on the 6.5. Yeah, thank thanks you. for the time. Thank it's you. always thank good to talk to you guys. Yeah, Appreciate fun. it. Thank you. All right, everyone, the 6.5 is on the road. We are here in San Jose at the Lattice Semiconductor Developer Conference, the first ever, definitely not the last. <laughs> for Patrick Moore and myself, though, we've got to say goodbye. Hit that subscribe button. Join us for all of our great content here on the 6.5. We'll see you all later.